Hi, everybody, and welcome to my presentation on inner product function encryption with fine-grained access control. This is joint work with Michelle Abdalla, Dario Catalano, and Roman Gay. I will briefly recall the, 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 the settings of functional encryption. Here we have two parties, Alice and Bob. Uh, Alice has a master public key and some message. Um, so it includes the, the message under the public key, the master public key. Uh, and Bob, um, being in possession of the encryption key associated to some function f, uh, it can decrypt and it will obtain the function of the message and not the message itself. This master public key and the circuit key are generated by some master authority. And in terms of security, we want that the encryption and the secret key for the function f only leak f of m and no other information about the message. We are interested in unbounded collusion um, in the setting, and uh, which means that we, we, we consider security with respect to q uh, secret keys. So for q functions, f1 all the way up to fq, uh, and this queue is a polynomial which is not set up in advance. So then this, the scheme is unbounded. So again, we only want to leak f1 of m, fq of m, and nothing else about the message. Uh, we know that functional encryption uh, is uh, roughly equivalent to indistinguishable obfuscation. Uh, but since obfuscation candidates are um, inefficient, uh, in practice, we, we want to look at efficient constructions based on standard assumption. Um, and um, uh, a known direction, um, a very explored, um, a very explored direction, is to um, consider by previous work is to look at inner product functional encryption. Uh, and here, Alice um, now has a vector x, which it sends to to Bob. Um, uh, it says to Bob the encryption, and Bob its secret key now is associated associated to some vector y. X and Y live uh, over ZP to some dimension D. And when it decrypts, it gets the inner product of X with Y. And in this paper, we're interested in bounded inner product. Um, so we're interested in the case where the two norms are bounded. And we work over a group of prime order P. So in terms of this, this is uh, the inner product function encryption has been extensively studied. Um, in terms of semantic security, the um, um, the goal is to only leak the inner product as before, and uh, so the functionality and nothing else about the plaintext. And one can also consider indistinguishable with security, where um, you want that these two ciphertexts are for x0 and x1 are computationally indistinguishable. And because you can always, um, if you have some secret key, you can always perform decryptions, you want that you cannot trivially distinguish. So you want to have this additional uh, trivial relations so that you cannot trivially distinguish. So let's talk a bit about leakage. Um, it turns out that if you have uh, D keys, so uh, so here, for example, the keys for the canonical vectors, uh, then you can you can decrypt uh, and you can obtain so the first component, the second component of X. Um, in fact, you can compute, um, you can recover the entire plain text X. So as long as you have D linearly independent vectors, you can completely recover the plain text. Uh, and in practice, uh, this means that you have to, to keep track um, of the keys that you generate because um, as, as, as soon as you get to this, then um, you don't have security anymore. I mean, uh, the plaintiffs are completely recoverable. So a natural question that we ask is whether we can, we can tune this leakage somehow. So here we consider a combination of inner product function encryption and attribute-based encryption. So now ciphertext, um, also take an additional parameter, um, P, so a policy P in the encryption. And secret keys also have uh, this additional parameter, the attributes. And when we decrypt, we want that if the policy uh, is satisfied, then we can get the inner product. And if not, then you should get nothing. You should get bottom. So another way to think about this question is, oh, you know how to construct ABE and you know how to construct IPFE, but is there any technical uh, problem in combining them? And uh, alternatively, you can consider um, can consider the question of what is the richest functionality that we can get from standard assumptions. Our results are two schemes. One is in pairing groups, um, and uh, here the policies um, can be monotone spam programs, um, inner product predicate encryption, so orthogonality testing, um, where the attributes are hidden, uh, and these schemes are adaptively secure. 
And we also propose some lattice-based schemes um, which achieve a data security in the random worker model and selectively the st in the standard model. So the takeaway, at least in the pairing world, would be that uh, what we know um, how to achieve the policies that we know how to achieve with ABE right now, um, we, we also know how to, now we also know how to, um, uh, how to construct this, 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 uh, this scheme where uh, we have functional encryption with the ABE policies. So what, um, before I explain the, some um, high level ideas of uh, our scheme, um, let's try a trivial approach. And here, um, let's see what happens if we just consider two layers, a layer of ABE and a layer of IPFE. And the secret key, so we, we encrypt with, uh, with an IPFE layer, we encrypt the plain text and we add um, on top of that an uh, attribute based encryption layer. And the secret key is just the, the, two, the pair of two keys. So the AB key and the inner product functional encryption key. But this is insecure. And to see why, we can consider these keys for uh, attribute zero, for y0, and attribute one for y1, where the policy is only satisfied by attribute zero, but not by attribute one. So then what is the attack? You can decrypt using the blue component of the blue key. You can decrypt the AB layer because the policy is satisfied. And then you're left only with the IPFE layer. And then you use the green component of the green key to, to decrypt the IPFE layer and get uh, the inner product of X with Y1. But recall that when the policy was not satisfied, when it was zero, we should, were supposed to get bottom. So instead of getting bottom, we get X1, Y1. And the reason for that is basically we can mix and match keys. There is no, um, these two components here are not linked in any way. They are independent of each other. Um, so we can mix and match. So let's look at uh, the ideas on how to solve this. Um, our pairing based construction uses the following building blocks. So we, 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 we use the dual system uh, AB of waters and the ALS scheme for inner product functional encryption um, from LS16. And we need an additional technical tool, which is predicate encodings. This can be seen as a one-time secure private key statistical variant of ABE. And I will not explain um, in detail what these predicate encodings are. I will just take an example for uh, identity-based encryption. So here, the secret key will be, will consist in three scalars from ZP to the three. And to encrypt, um, we have a one-time pad of alpha plus N and these two additional so with this additional quantity of W0 plus ID W1. And key gen has the same quantity with respect to ID prime, but it added, adds to it alpha. So now let's see how do we, so you can see that all of this is linear with respect to alpha, W0 and W1. So how do we, dec how do we decrypt? Um, we, decrypt we can decrypt linearly. Uh, and to do that, we just uh, subtract from the, blue, from the blue term, we can subtract the green term. Um, and when the identities match, this W0 plus ID prime plus W1 is the same as W0 plus ID W1. Uh, these two terms disappear and we're only left with alpha. And if ID is different from ID prime, then since we have two unknowns uh, and the IDs are different, then we can argue that the two terms are pairwise independent and no information is statistically leaked about alpha. So then M is also secure. It is known from, uh, from previous work that um, dual existing encryption can uh, boost the security of this uh, one-time primitive, of this one-time predicate encoding to, to obtain fully-fledged uh, attribute-based encryption. Um, so now let's look at if these predicates can be adapted somehow to, to have functional encryption for inner products. Uh, so what, what do you do for that? Um, you consider um, some uh, vector alpha now instead of the scalar alpha. And the key gen, so this term is the same, and the key gen now is changing. Uh, alpha is uh, the inner product now with y, with a vector y in our secret key. And if the, if the identities match, then we can decrypt linearly by uh, subtracting. So we multiply the gold part with uh, y transpose. Um, and we, we, we subtract the blue part. Um, and we add the green part. So as before, when the identities match, this term over here 
reduces this term over here. Um, and then alpha transpose, so this is reduced from this, and alpha transpose times y is reduced, uh, disappears because of this term. So we're only left with the inner product of x with y. And at a high level, um, what we do is to look at the previous compilers and to get a compiler which also adds inner product functional encryption to the mix, um, where we are interested in adding some uh, some kind of um, uh, encrypting somehow these terms over here, this alpha plus x and this alpha transpose times y over here. So what would be um, a proof sketch for our scheme if we wanted to, to switch the challenge vector ctx star p star in the presence of um, the master public key. So you can, you can compute uh, encryptions, uh, honest encryptions, and you have some keys, uh, s, k, y, at. Um, then the idea would be if the policy doesn't match, then you can argue this using um, the security of the dual system, so the, the ABE security, the attribute based encryption security. And if the policy doesn't match, if the policy does match, um, then, so this is a case which didn't appear in ABE. So in ABE, if the policy is matched, then you can just decrypt the message. And you don't have to argue anything anymore. Uh, but in this case now, we still need to argue that if the inner product is the same, then the vectors are indistinguishable. Um, and for that, we, we need, we, we, for this additional uh, step that didn't appear before, we have to use uh, sec the security of the ALS scheme. Um, and what I want to mention is that this scheme is selective, even though the building blocks are adaptively secure. Uh, and to see why, um, we need to know uh, the policy in advance. And in fact, we don't really need to know the policy. We need to know just these bits, zero or one. Um, we need to know if p star of at would be zero or one so that we know how to switch the key uh, through which uh, branch we switch the key. To, to, to get to that security, uh, which we also prove um, for a different scheme, um, we, we need to generalize predicate encodings and we introduce a new notion of function encodings. And here we deal with technical problems which were previously encountered uh, in previous work. Um, in the setting of fully hiding predicate encryption for inner product testing. So what are function encodings? Again, they are a one-time secure private key statistically secure scheme. And if you want to see the exact definition, you can take a look at the paper. Now I, we will just look at the identity-based case. Um, here, the secret key has, um, it consists of two vectors, W1 and W2. To encrypt, we, we, we do something similar to the predicate. So we do x plus w1 plus i times w2. Um, and the key chain is y transpose times this. And as before, if the identity is matched, then we can just multiply to the left y transpose um, on the grid term and subtract the purple term, the blue term. Uh, how do you argue security? Well, if the identities match, then um, you want to, you know that you get uh, the inner product of X with Y because you can partially decrypt. Um, so then we, we just use the fact W1, um, since it's a random vector, uh, plus this difference is uh, identically distributed to some W1 prime because W1 is uniformly random. Uh, and now we just look at the green term and this W1 um, we, we, we replace with, with this term over here. And x0 basically uh, reduces itself and we only left to x1 plus w1 plus id times w2, which is exactly the encryption of x1. So of course, this only works if we have um, uh, the trivial, uh, the trivial uh, relation between x0 and x1. And if they are not, if, the, if we have the same identity for the ciphertext, but uh, we don't have decryption, then we, do, we need to do something different. I mean, um, uh, we do the same thing, but you also need to consider the leakage that is uh, provided by this additional term in the decryption, which doesn't allow to decrypt. Um, and, uh, but the idea is the same. Now, uh, even in the presence of this W1, uh, the, the first term is, uh, you, you can make this difference appear here, uh, and you can get from encryptions of X0 to encryptions of X1. 
Um, but for more details, I will point you to the paper. So we get an adaptively secure scheme um, for monotone spam programs and for orthogonality testing uh, with uh, hidden attributes, so inner product predicate encryption. And uh, now I will discuss a bit related work. Um, for example, um, there is these three papers uh, that uh, have looked at the similar uh, similar schemes in the context. Uh, so their purpose was to use them to build uh, obfuscation, discussion obfuscation candidates. Um, and they can support feature functionalities, so they can support quadratic functionalities um, and NC1 policies. So uh, we can, um, we have inner products and monotone spam programs. So monotone spam programs from a practical point of view um, are the same as NC1. Um, uh, and uh, what I wanted to say is that all of these constructions are aligned on pairings. Now, what we have, even though we, we only do it for inner products, we do have adaptive security, which is what we would want in practice. So the, um, this three schemes over here only have selective security. Uh, and we do have public key. Um, we, we have a public key scheme. Um, but there is also a very interesting related work, which considers um, other functions. So for example, attribute weight sums, um, or there is even this work, which has quadratic functional encryption and the policies are also in C1. So, um, and the only drawback would be that the security is selective. But for more details, you can see, um, you, you can see um, a discussion in the paper. And now I will uh, talk a bit about talk a bit about the uh, lattice construction. Here we have uh, an adaptively indistinguishable scheme um, in the random Oracle model, based on the IPFE of ALS sixteen and the identity based encryption of GPT two thousand and eight, and um, a selective scheme in the standard model um, using ABB ten and ALS sixteen. So what is the the high level idea? We noticed that um, in the uh, inner product functional encryption of ALS, the encryption keys are linear combinations of the master circuit key. So in particular, the master circuit key is a matrix and the encryption keys are just uh, this matrix multiplied to, to, to some vector. And to, 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 to the vector Y that uh, for, for which the keys are associated, to, the, to which the keys are associated. So our idea is to, to start with the IB schemes of either uh, this, uh, this scheme or the ABB scheme and to consider linear combinations of decryption keys for identity ID. So basically we, we project the decryption key for a particular identity ID um, on the vector Y in the decryption key, which would be just Y transpose times the matrix, which uh, is SKID in these two schemes. And it turns out that the, the result is a combination of the two schemes. So the inner product function encryption scheme and either GPV 2008 or ABB 2010. Uh, and as before, we argue using the security, either the ALS security or the identity-based encryption security. So just to recall the proof sketch, we want to switch the challenge. Um, we want to see the challenge to TX star uh, with ID star. Um, if we had in the presence of the massa public, massa public key and the keys, uh, the decryption keys SK, Y with ID. So similarly to before, if the identities don't match, then we, we switch the key using the identity-based uh, encryption security. If the identities match, then we can use the ALS security. And uh, you can ask why doesn't this yield a selective scheme? And for example, in the random Oracle model, it's not the case because um, we only need to guess the index of the random Oracle query. So each identity will correspond to, to some matrix. This matrix is computed as the random Oracle applied on the identity. Um, so instead of guessing the identity, we only guess the, the index of the random Oracle query. But for more details, you can see the, the proof in the paper. And finally, I will uh, conclude with an open problem um, of uh, whether one can combine uh, attribute-based encryption for circuits with uh, inner product functional encryption. Um, so, so here again, we are in the lattice regime. Um, and uh, right now we don't know how to solve this uh, for technical reasons. 
but it would be uh, it would be very interesting to to see a solution to this. And um, just to conclude uh, and to recap, we we have pairing based schemes where um, the policies are monotone spam programs and you know product predicate encryption and identity based encryption. Um, so with adaptive IND security, and we have lattice based schemes, um, but only for identity uh, based policies. Um, and they are adaptively secure in the random Oracle model and selectively secure in the standard model. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope you enjoy the conference and uh, um, hopefully see you at the live session. Thank you.